We have the scoop on the knife threat in the UA library. Learn about National Food Day. And find out how dogs can help children learn to read. All this and more. This, this is Wildcats. Is Wildcats. Good evening, and welcome to the late edition of Wildcast. I'm Carol Ann Scott. And I'm Janice Yu. Thanks for joining us tonight. The 50 to 60 million residents in the northeastern part of the U.S. braced themselves for Superstorm Sandy, which made landfall Monday afternoon. Sandy is traveling through the most populated areas of the country. A state of emergency has been declared, and the state's expected to be hit the hardest. Cities have been evacuated, and schools and businesses remain closed. Millions are currently without any power. I really think that um, it's really scary what happened, and I, I just really wish the best for anyone if they have family or friends um, in that area and hope everything works out okay. Yeah, I know, and hopefully the death toll remains fairly low and that everyone gets their power back pretty soon. I agree. It's that time of year again, time to register for spring courses when some people set their alarms way too early and stress about getting the classes they want. Most of the priority registration dates are passed, but priority registration for freshmen is open November 7th through 13th. Don't forget to go to uaccess.arizona.edu to create your shopping cart and make sure you get the classes you need for the spring semester. Last Wednesday, students in the main library received quite the shock when a man brought a knife inside. The man identified as Timothy Wayne Mulford was found to have no affiliation with the university. He's been charged with two counts of aggravated assault and three counts of resisting arrest. Our reporter Liza Pluto has more on what happened during this incident. Property theft, assault, and random acts of violence are just some of the crimes students are subjected to. Criminal behavior seems to be more apparent, and it is vital to be aware of the proper safety precautions around campus. Just the other day, U of A student Sarah Morve was studying at the main library and was a witness to horrific criminal behavior. Some random guy just walking around the library and I noticed a knife in his hand and apparently he was going up to everyone saying, where is she, where is she, apparently looking for his girlfriend. Then the police came and um, evacuated the whole library and he was resisting arrest and got taken out on his hands and knees and I'm not sure what happened after that, but it was really scary. University of Arizona police officer Joe Bermudez shares his insight on upholding safety and in general, what safety measures students should take. Pepper spray is allowed. Uh, anyone can carry that um, for their protection. Uh, the main thing um, for anyone on campus uh, to be safe is just being aware of your surroundings. That is the main thing. Knowing who's around you and what's around you. Paying attention, um, and looking around when you're walking through campus. Mm -hmm. Not updating your Facebook page or texting on your cell phone. In addition, students should always be alert and aware of their surroundings, but some crimes are simply unexpected. Remember to report any and all suspicious behavior. For Wildcast, I'm Liza Pluto. Last week, our reporter Sarah Canty took a closer look at the new safety policies at the UA Library. While they didn't stop the knife incident from occurring during the day, hopefully they will be worth the hassle in the future. If you are headed to the library at night, you now have to swipe your cat card to get in after 9 p.m. This is a change from an earlier procedure that made you swipe in at midnight. UAPD says the increased security for three hours is helping. It um, accounts for the people that are actually entering the building and it does help with safety because the staff knows that the people that are entering that building are university affiliated. UA participated in National Food Day last Wednesday. The event brought awareness to how our food is produced and how it affects our environment. Wildcast reporter Alicia Mandel has more information on this event. The U of A held a food fair on Wednesday to promote healthy and sustainable living for students. It gave information on how to eat healthier on campus and in the local Tucson community. 
The Food Fear benefits us by just giving us the opportunity to contact the public. Our goal at Plant Based Nation is to go into the public and educate them on the health benefits of a plant based lifestyle. I get to con talk to students and um, discuss the benefits of living a healthy lifestyle. Food Day is a national celebration that celebrates a healthy eating lifestyle. Several chefs came to the food fair to give cooking demonstrations and show students how to make healthy and affordable meal choices. I tried new um, ingredients from gar local gardens and places that I never would have uh, would have considered prior to coming here. In addition to the free samples that were offered to students, there was also live music and vendors that promoted their companies and what healthy options that they have that are available for students. Well, hopefully it educates them on the great choices we have available within the student unions, from the San Rafael Valley grass-fed beef to the sustainable Santa Monica seafood program. We're very proud of the choices we have that are local, sustainable, and good for you. By being away from home, many students do not eat the nutritional foods that they are supposed to. It is the first time that many students make diet decisions on their own and are exploring different eating options. They're away from mom and dad's opinions on food, so we want to really introduce them to a more sustainable, healthy way of eating that hopefully they'll carry on through the rest of their lives. It teaches us that cooking isn't like, doesn't have to be a huge ordeal, and just because we're students doesn't mean that we should avoid cooking. Eating healthy can be a very difficult thing to do on campus, but the food fair offered several alternatives to always eating on campus and what foods are healthy to eat and easy to make. Reporting from the U of A Mall, for Wildcast, I'm Alicia Mendel. You know, it's really a shame I missed that. I was in class and I didn't get to stop by the mall that day. Oh really? I'm usually not on that side of campus, but I was lucky enough to walk by and I saw a lot of people enjoying their time there. Looked like it was a good turnout. We'd like to wish you all a happy Halloween and hope you stay safe as you partake in holiday festivities. Tweet us your favorite costume ideas at UATV3. Stay tuned for an insight into Pima County Library's means of inspiring young readers. Hello and welcome to UA Tonight. We are your hosts. <laughs> no, <right. laughs> no. It's okay, you don't have to cut me off. No oh way. God. I might Thank literally you so much. The show, but I'm head It's that easy. Travelers. Travelers. It's I've never so been <laughs> for drunk driving after calling the cops on himself. We thought that you guys. Oh my oh god! My god. <laughs> Welcome back. October is National Book Month and the Pima County Library took measures to promote children's reading. Wildcast reporter Chelsea Wold tells us more. Here, so Sometimes the best people to read to are not people at all. Sometimes they have paws, a wet nose, and a tail. Man's best friend also doubles for a perfect listener when reading a book. And Pima County Public Library makes this possible in a program that promotes literacy called Read to a Dog. Well, read to a Dog is a great opportunity for kids who are learning to read or just um, pretending to read in a way um, to feel comfortable and because a dog is not going to judge them. Reading can intimidate some children. A dog can provide the confidence kids need to become better readers. Almost every day at a different Pima County Library branch, children have a chance to read to a dog. There is no age limit when it comes to reading to a dog. A child does not even need to know how to read. 
No language barrier exists either. All that is needed is a bond between human and canine. You know, when you have English as your second language, you know, reading can really be a struggle and frustrating, but having a dog there just really helps relax you and not feel like you're being criticized for every little mistake that you're making. No criticism is ever given. Nothing but a few licks is all that will ever leave the mouths of these library dogs. Well, except for maybe the occasional high five. It come to the door. But they wind up getting into reading. Seldom do you ever see dogs being read to in the library. But if you do, be sure to turn an ear to listen to the sound of learning. A fuzzy face, soft eyes, and a warm heart make for not only a good dog, but a good reading pal as well. Reporting for Wildcast, I'm Chelsea Wold. Tucson Unified School District's ban on its Native American Studies program has been a heavily debated controversy over the past two years. With TUSD's governing board elections coming up, this heated discussion is at the forefront. Wildcast reporter Nikki O'Shea looks at how one local activist for the program is trying to get his message across to the community. Nikki? New Mexico native Jake Frawa strives to give voice to those who are not heard. Rather than picketing outside City Hall, his protests are seen on large buildings, what we know as graffiti. But going beyond the lines and letters, Frawa creates art to voice messages. You can't just be an artist and not an activist in that, that uh, life way or that career. You have to be both because uh, if not, your art is, is irrelevant, your art isn't vital, your art means nothing. During the dispute to ban ethnic studies in the Tucson Unified School District, Jake Frawa found the perfect canvas right here behind us to protest on. The mural is called Can't Ban History. Books and curriculum pertaining to ethnic studies in TUSD have recently been banned. Former TUSD teacher Yolanda Sotelo is frustrated with the legislation, but relieved that artists like Jake paint lasting public protests. This kind of mural will, hopefully, people will look at it and say, oh yeah, this is about this issue, or they'll ask, why is this? Maybe they'll, they'll want to become educated on the issue. American Indian Studies graduate student and friend of Frawa's, Gavin Healy, truly sees this art aesthetically portraying a community's history. That's not the angry rhetoric that you can get with, with social movement. I think it's, it's a beautiful way to display an agenda or an issue to people who may be oblivious or may even have, a, have a, certain, a certain position on it, but can still enjoy the community, what this art can do for the community and for the surroundings of an area. But in Sotelo's mind, having a culturally diverse community does not correlate with ignoring it in the classroom. The message is, it is the history, the literature of our indigenous past, of our indigenous present, and the kids aren't being given the opportunity to read the literature that they can best connect to or relate to. Through his struggle as an American Indian artist and activist, Frawa is reminded that he is part of an influential movement, especially from Camp Ban History's positive feedback. Sometimes when I am feeling like, oh, you know, bad, down on myself, I, like those voices come back, and I'm like, oh, well, I can't be like that because I have to keep going. There's actually people who do believe in me or do believe in, in the work that I do. Reporting from downtown for Wildcast, I'm Nikki O'Shea. So it's nice to see someone take a really peaceful approach to this protest, but I really wonder if there's any legal issues involved with painting on walls. Right. I don't know, but either we can look it up and find out, or I'm sure we'll hear about them on the news. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Be sure to check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash Janice and Carol Lan. We'd love to hear from you. Interact with us, send us your story ideas or questions, and read up on the latest news updates. After the break, find out what political parties have done to prepare for election night. I'm Derek Williams, the former U of A Wildcat. You're watching UA TV. Don't change the channel. I'll be right there. Thanks, Kate.
cameraman. You're my hero. Welcome back. Hurricane Sandy stole the presidential election's thunder when it forced President Obama and Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney to both suspend their campaign appearances. Former President Bill Clinton is expected to campaign on Obama's behalf for the next week. Governor Romney fulfilled a couple of appearances on Ohio and Iowa on Monday, but canceled all appearances today. Sandy may affect early voters and hinder access to the polls on Election Day. Be sure to check out our Facebook page for updates, and you can find information on voting on Arizona at the Secretary of State website at www.azsos.gov election. Political campaigning has also been brought to campus now that the long-awaited election day is almost here. Students are being politically proactive on campus in preparation for the coming election with one with one week left, political clubs on campus turn their focus to get as many students informed as possible about the candidates. The College Republicans Club stays involved with the political candidates through phone banking, setting up street signs, and focusing on getting continued involvement. They also are on the mall every Monday and Wednesday for students to sign up, support the cause, or voice their opposing views. College Republicans Club Secretary Grace Varney says that with one week left until the election, their goal is to make sure every student on kind of campus like crunch time now, on so November time for 6th. people to really like go online, do the research. You know, if they see if they see a proposition or a candidate that they're not so sure about, it, it's really time for them to go. And sometimes people are calling the candidates, seeing what they're all about. Um, that's really important. It's also important for them just use your just use your ways to research. Go online, go on the internet, and get more involved about it. You know, I'm actually really ashamed, um, slightly embarrassed, but I messed up my paperwork for my absentee ballot. I'm a registered voter, but since I'm not in California, I won't be able to vote in this election. Well, that's really unfortunate. I'm hoping that everyone else was able to register in time and they will be voting in the next election. As always, thanks for tuning in to another edition of Wildcast. You can watch us anytime online at uatv.arizona.edu or on our YouTube channel, UATVCH3. We'll see you next week for another late edition of Wildcast.